How kingship turns into tyranny. This is the origin and genesis of genuine kingship. People do not only keep up the government of such men personally, but for their descendants also for many generations. From the conviction that those who are born from and educated by men of this kind will have principles also like theirs, but if they subsequently become displeased with their descendants, they do not any longer decide their choice of rulers and kings by their physical strength or brute courage, but by the differences of their intellectual and reasoning faculties from practical experience of the decisive importance of such a distinction. In old times, then, those who were once thus selected and obtained this office grew old in their royal functions, making magnificent strongholds and surrounding them with walls and extending their frontiers, partly for the security of their subjects and partly to provide them with the abundance of the necessities of life. And while engaged in these works, they were exempt from all vituperation or jealousy, because they did not make their distinctive dress, food, or drink at all conspicuous, but lived very much like the rest, and joined in the everyday employments of the common people. But when their royal power became hereditary in the family, and they found every necessary for the security ready to their hands, as well as more than was necessary for their personal support, then they gave the rein to their appetites, imagined that rulers must needs wear different clothes from those of the subjects, have different and elaborate luxuries at the table, and must even seek sensual indulgence, however unlawful the source, without fear of denial. These things, having given rise in the one case to jealousy and offense in the other, to the outburst of hatred and passionate resentment, became a tyranny. The first step in disintegration was taken, and plots began to be formed against the government, which did not now proceed from the worst men, but from the noblest, most high-minded and most courageous, because these are the men who can least submit to the tyrannical acts of the rulers. Degeneration of constitutions. But as soon as the people got leaders, they cooperated with them against the dynasty for the reasons I've mentioned and the kingship and despotism were alike entirely abolished, and aristocracy once more began to revive and start afresh. For in their immediate gratitude to those who had deposed the despots, the people employed them as their leaders and entrusted their interests to them, who, looking upon this charge at first as a great privilege, made the public advantage their chief concern and conducted all kinds of business public or private, with diligence and caution. But when the sons of these men received the same position of authority from their fathers, having had no experience of misfortunes, and none at all of civil equality and freedom of speech, but having been bred up from the first under the shadow of their father's authority and lofty position, some of them gave themselves up with passion to avarice, and unscrupulous love of money, others to drinking, and the boundless debaucheries which accompanies it, and others to the violation of women or the forcible appropriation of boys. And so they turned an aristocracy into an oligarchy. But it was not long before they roused in the minds of the people the same feelings as before, and their fall, therefore, was very like the disaster which befell the tyrants. How democracy arises and degenerates. For no sooner had the knowledge of the jealousy and hatred existing in the citizens against them emboldened someone to oppose the government by word or deed, having then got rid of these rulers by assassination or exile, they do not venture to set up a king again, being still in terror, of the injustice to which this led before, nor dare they entrust the common interests again to more than one, considering the recent example of their misconduct. And therefore, as the only sound hope left them is that which depends upon themselves, they are driven to take refuge in that, and so changed the constitution from an oligarchy to a democracy, and took upon themselves the superintendence in charge of the state, and as long as any survive who have had experience of oligarchical supremacy and domination, 
They regard their present constitution as a blessing, and they hold equality and freedom as of the utmost value. But as soon as a new generation has arisen and the democracy has descended to the children's children, long association weakens their value for equality and freedom. And some seek to become more powerful than the ordinary citizens. And the most liable to this temptation are the rich. So when they begin to be fond of office and find themselves unable to obtain it by their own unassisted efforts and their own merit, they ruin their estates while enticing and corrupting the common people in every possible way. By which means when, in their senseless mania for reputation, they've made the populace ready and greedy to receive bribes. The virtue of democracy is destroyed and it is transformed into government of violence and the strong hand. For the mob, habituated to feed at the expense of others and to have its hopes of a livelihood in the property of its neighbors as soon as it has got a leader sufficiently ambitious and daring, being excluded by poverty from the sweets of civil honors produces a reign of mere violence. Then come tumultuous assemblies, massacres, banishment, redivisions of land, until, after losing all trace of civilization, it has once more found a master and a despot. This is the regular cycle of constitutional revolutions, and the natural order in which constitutions change, are transformed, and return again to their original stage. If a man have a clear grasp of these principles, he may perhaps make a mistake as to the dates at which this or that will happen to a particular constitution, but he will rarely be entirely mistaken as to the stage of growth or decay at which it has arrived, or as to the point at which it will undergo some revolutionary change. 